Uh, thank you again for having me. Um, I, some of the work uh, that we're presenting today, I just wanted to start right off the bat by saying this may not be ultra high performance uh, concrete because of the fact that we did not truly have uh, like a hundred MPA concrete mix. Uh, but the idea here was uh, that uh, the mix that we were working uh, with uh, is probably high performance uh, because of the type, type of fiber reinforcement uh, being used. Uh, and, and the one specifically we're talking about is carbon fibers. Uh, so the work uh, that uh, I'm presenting today was done uh, at uh, my facility called uh, Facility for Innovative Materials and Infrastructure Monitoring, uh, FIMIM uh, for short. Uh, and um, we'll see how this goes. Uh, my uh, postdoctoral fellow, Dr. Ashutosh Sharma, will uh, co-present with me um, uh, midway in the presentation. And I want to acknowledge uh, Mariam Monazami, uh, my PhD student, who also contributed to this uh, presentation um, uh, 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 today. So um, let's uh, dive uh, into this. Um, the uh, agenda that I have is uh, we'll begin with uh, some problem statement. Uh, like I mentioned, uh, we'll present uh, FRC as a, as a, as a solution. Uh, and again, not exactly ultra high performance, but uh, uh, hopefully you'll see how uh, how uh, this particular case study has been doing for, for the last six months. Uh, this was a two-year project um, uh, that we just completed back in August. Um, and the way we'll do it is um, we had different milestones uh, in the project and we'll present you um, the presentation as if we were going through the different uh, milestones. Uh, towards the end, uh, there's a small component that I think uh, some of you may find interesting is um, the monitoring aspect. And uh, uh, my previous uh, presenter, Giovanni, presented on uh, DIC. So uh, sort of building on that is um, monitoring user using uh, uh, embedded sensors and some non-destructive evaluation. And finally, we'll try and conclude. So uh, the focus of the presentation is uh, on, on pavements. Uh, and again, I hope uh, the uh, attendees find value in this because we saw lots of uh, bridge girders uh, and some great uh, presentations. Uh, this is more on uh, the use of uh, uh, rigid pavements uh, 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 for uh, as a paving surface or concrete as a, as a paving surface. So I know in ACI, we don't talk about the word asphalt. Uh, so you have to excuse me for the next two minutes because I'm gonna talk about asphalt, but I promise I will switch back to concrete. Uh, so this uh, particular site is uh, very common. I know uh, throughout the world, uh, where you see map cracking and uh, if you don't do much to the map cracking it very soon uh, starts looking in, into this uh, these beautiful uh, potholes uh, on on the pavement uh, so uh, one of the solution over the years has been a rigid pavement i intentionally have selected this uh, uh, this photograph here uh, this particular photograph i took uh, in a in a project in in india and the reason i present it here is uh, i wanted to showcase that uh, even though uh, this particular project had low to medium traffic, uh, this was actually a residential zone, uh, but these folks actually decided to go with rigid pavements because they were just sick and tired of the amount of uh, repairs they had to do in, uh, in, in asphalt pavements. So nice looking pavement here with uh, wonderful curing taking place by the good old ponding uh, technique. So, so all looking nice. Uh, I came back after a month and you see some nice looking construction joints which have been sealed up. Uh, here, so uh, excellent work. Uh, but then what happens uh, eventually? So uh, what ends up happening eventually is you see these cracks uh, in areas that it was not intended to be. Uh, and I don't know what the quality of resolution is on, on your screens, but there, there are, again, numerous cracks. This was within, within a month. And uh, this, uh, again, starts presenting a little bit of uh, a not so good outcome in, in rigid pavements in, in concrete. Uh, North America, uh, Canada, not very far behind. And I have to spend a, a quick minute on this particular slide explaining the whole uh, 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 premise and the rationales for this project that we worked on. So what's happening locally in the province we are in, in British Columbia and many other provinces in Canada is typically we have asphalt, obviously, uh, majority of the roads, pavements are asphalt. Uh, but what they found was the locations where there are bus stops, uh, because you have uh, uh, large buses, we have some double uh, double decked buses here also. So when they come and stop at the bus stop, they bring in a lot of inertia. And these are pretty heavy buses. And uh, when they're taking off, the same thing, they want to push back on the pavement. And even if they're standing in the bus stop. So 
Uh, these three conditions make for very, very high distress on the pavements. And what they were finding was the locations of the bus, bus stops were being replaced very, very frequently. Uh, the asphalt was being replaced. So what they decided to do many years ago, they said, okay, those sections of the bus pads, we're going to make it into rigid uh, pavements. We're going to use concrete. And uh, I, uh, I'm in the concrete domain, so that was good news for us. However, we found uh, have been finding that even the concrete pavements, uh, this is a, a pretty... Uh, a dramatic photograph. Uh, this is our project site, actually. The existing existing concrete base within 10 years started developing these cracks. Uh, so this is where we came in and uh, we said, is there something we can do in terms of uh, uh, promoting use of concrete, but not having these, this ugly site? Uh, so again, like I mentioned, uh, we'll, we'll look into possible solution with FRC uh, on a recently completed project. Uh, we had uh, five different milestones or phases uh, for the project. And what we'll try and do is uh, uh, Ashutosh is going to do the first three, and then I'll come back and uh, do the, the final two. So over to you, Ashutosh. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Rishi, uh, for letting me uh, be a part of this wonderful project. And thank you, Dr. K, for letting us present the work. Uh, so uh, the project, as a project started, uh, project as Dr. Rishi suggested, that it had two major uh, uh, parts. So one was the development of high performance concrete in the lab. And then uh, the second was the utilization of this concrete uh, for constructing a concrete pavement. So uh, the project started with the fi procurement of fibers for which we, uh, uh, we selected four different uh, four different suppliers. Well, one was Euclid Chemicals, Mitsubishi Chemicals, Soltec Chemicals, and Tejan Chem Chemicals. So uh, it should be noted that we focused only on carbon fibers because um, that, that was the theme of the project from Alberta Innovates. Uh, and uh, yeah, next. Yeah, so uh, the, the these are the different kind of fibers that we procured uh, with a different lengths, with different characteristics, including the tensile strength and the modulus of elasticity. Uh, however, it should be noted that the uh, fibers uh, procured from Mitsubishi exhibited the lowest um, the tensile strength as well as the modulus of elasticity. Uh, but in general, the fiber lengths that we considered were less six millimeters, 12 millimeters, and 18 millimeters for the uh, uh, development of concrete. Yes, next. So once the fibers were procured, we wanted to verify the characteristics that we just shown. So we used several microscopy tests, including SEM, uh, for uh, verifying the fi fi uh, filament diameter, fiber morphology, and fiber composition. And we found that almost all kind of uh, bit-based fibers had 94% of carbon content and all uh, pan-based carbon fibers had 98% uh, car of uh, carbon content. It's next. So this represents the same images for uh, the bit-based as well as the carbon fiber, uh, pan-based carbon fibers. So, so, so once uh, the characterization was done, we had to start with the lab program. So the lab program uh, in, in involved the casting of uh, the motor carbon fiber reinforced samples, as well as concrete carbon fiber reinforced samples. We use the standard HCI 5441 for the mix design. And the modern carbon fiber uh, reinforced samples included cubes, dog bones, beams, and the concrete samples included cubes, beams, and cylinders. In addition to that, we also cast uh, large size round panels uh, with a diameter of 80, 80 centimeters in the lab. And uh, the volumetric uh, concentration of fibers that we used varied from 0.5% to 1%, to 2%, 3%, 4%, and even we tested for 10% as well. This was just to uh, evaluate the overall mechanical behavior of carbon fibers in concrete uh, and motor as well, and also to find a suitable volumetric concentration for uh, constructing the concrete pavements. So these are the different uh, the, the different samples that we made using carbon fiber reinforced samples, uh, carbon fibers, uh, with uh, different kind of fiber uh, fiber concentration, fiber lengths, and the different kind of tests that we conducted for each uh, sample on each sample in in our lab. Yeah, next. So uh, this represents the different kind of tests that we conducted. Uh, the we, we we conducted the uh, 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 flexural strength to find out the model is the rupture for carbon fiber reinforced motor. Uh, we also conducted, uh, evaluated the tensile strength for uh, uh, carbon fiber reinforced motor samples using dog, uh, dog bones. We, we, we evaluated the compressive strength using cubes for carbon fiber reinforced motor. And we also evaluated the flexural strength for carbon fiber reinforced concrete. 
and uh, we uh, sort of tested the uh, carbon fiber reinforced uh, panels using in-house developed uh, and instrumented uh, uh, test setup for testing the round panels. And then we, if the figure G represents the uh, the round uh, the dog bone samples that we casted with a, a specific 3D printed plate. Uh, just to simulate the single fiber pull out out of concrete. And then uh, we also subjected our uh, uh, concrete uh, uh, carbon fiber reinforced uh, beams to uh, deterioration mechanisms such as freeze and thaw. And we evaluated the deterioration of using infrared imaging of concrete. Over to you, Rishi. Great. Thank you, Ashutosh. Uh, uh, so, uh, uh, like you saw in this uh, slide, we're going all the way from single fiber pullout to fairly large uh, uh, round panels, which are 800 millimeters, as Ashutosh men mentioned. So, uh, the next little section, I uh, may go a little bit uh, uh, quickly because the focus of the, uh, the, the workshop uh, and uh, the session today is on practical application. So, I want to keep aside more time for the, the, the latter half. Uh, so you may see, uh, so please excuse me if you see me rushing through some of these slides. Uh, this particular slide is basically showing you a single fiber pullout uh, all the way for, for steel, as you would expect, uh, to polypropylene with strain hardening happenings, uh, happening at larger deflections. And you see a couple of carbon fibers, pitch and uh, pan based, which are here. And as one would expect, uh, somewhat brittle nature uh, for these carbon fibers. And um, uh, uh, towards the end, I'll present a solution there uh, for what could be done uh, to improve the, the brittleness uh, and uh, uh, some of the other performance for carbon fibers. So uh, we did compressive uh, uh, strength test, uh, tensile strength, like Ashutosh mentioned, these are the results. I won't go into the details. Uh, like expect you expect, FRC in this particular case did not dramatically uh, change uh, the compressive strength. Uh, the flexure behavior, I just uh, wanna highlight that as one would expect with controlled concrete, you would basically have no post-crack strength, just a very brittle snap into two pieces in the case of, uh, of beam. And all other fibers that you see here have some uh, post-crack strength. Uh, some, and th at this particular stage, we were try trying to identify which particular carbon fibers uh, would actually perform uh, best for us. In these graphs, you see a comparison to polypropylene fibers, but at this stage, we lose uh, the the steel fibers we, we did not move forward with steel fibers as that was not the focus uh, same idea here uh, we are starting to identify that certain types of uh, pan based carbon fibers were outperforming some of the other fibers and like i mentioned before in in post crack strength in control uh, would be uh, a zero post crack strength uh, but in some of the carbon fibers you have some uh, fairly large uh, 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 post crack strength so the this is for concrete the previous slide that i showed you was for mortar samples and uh, this is for round panels. Uh, we, we really, round panels are a little bit hard to do because these are pretty monstrous and you need a few people to lift them in place. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, we wanted to include this because you get the nice yield line theory and multiple cracking taking place in the samples. And uh, like uh, one would expect, uh, this is for control. Again, a very brittle failure here. And then you have nice uh, post-crack uh, strength happening here uh, with half a percent of carbon fibers. And this particular one is with 1% carbon fibers. So good, good news here uh, with both round panels. And uh, this is when we move to the highlight of the presentation, which is the field deployment. Uh, and like I said, which is the focus of uh, this session today. So uh, like I said, uh, what we did was uh, we wanted to look at what was happening at these bus pads and why these bus pads, even though made from flexible pavements to concrete pavements, were still going through a lot of deterioration. So we identified uh, a site. Uh, this is a, just a map of uh, University of Victoria. We have a nice looking ring road. Uh, and uh, uh, just the, the bus loop is uh, next to the, the campus uh, security office. Uh, this is a plan view of our bus exchange. Uh, this little section here is uh, has been uh, redone. And as you can see in this plan view that everywhere you have a bus stop, it's been it, it's made with a concrete a bus pad. So this is the, the part that takes a lot of beating. Uh, but our test site is actually on the other side. This particular segment has not been uh, repaired, uh, but you can see this particular bus pad actually was about 10 years old. A little section went through a lot of deterioration and they decided to change it. Uh, but yet again, uh, there has been, uh, there were issues uh, with, uh, with severe cracking. Uh, so what we did uh, was uh, we uh, took that particular site that I showed you and we decided to have a regular concrete uh, and along with that, 
uh, uh, high performance concrete or fiber reinforced concrete so that we could compare what was happening between between these two uh, sections. So again, the same view uh, I'm showing you, uh, we measured the, the existing cracks in, in the pavements. Uh, like I said, these are less than uh, uh, 10 years old, between five and 10, uh, severe cracking in all the control uh, bus pads. And uh, this is where uh, we had uh, uh, a, uh, our construction unit come in. Uh, we uh, excavated and removed the, the concrete uh, pads. Um, and uh, the typical, uh, the way uh, the uh, uh, design is specified for concrete bus pads is a steel uh, uh, welded wire mesh uh, in, in the pavement. Uh, actually looks very similar to a sidewalk. Uh, and uh, we, we didn't want to influence any of the design parameters. We wanted to do it the way it is done in, by the municipalities and the province. And uh, so a typical compaction taking place and welded wire mesh. And now it's ready to uh, receive the concrete pavement. Uh, the little section that I mentioned about uh, monitoring, uh, this is where we had a whole suite of embedded sensors uh, in both pavements. So you see the, the regular concrete pavement and you see the carbon fiber reinforced concrete pavement. Uh, the suite of sensors include all the way from strain gauges to moisture sensors to temperature sensors. Um, and uh, one of the unique uh, sensors that we've been working on are called piezoelectric patches. So these are the patches which can actually, um, when uh, you, you supply a, an electrical signal to them, they can actually actuate and vice versa. Uh, so this was uh, done to monitor the performance uh, remotely. Um, you see uh, our a group uh, installing the sensors, trying to protect all the lead wires uh, for uh, the, uh, the wired sensors, because uh, when concrete uh, comes, uh, sometimes you, you lose the connections uh, to the lead wires. Uh, confirmatory tests going on here uh, with the, tip, the, the usual slump uh, air and so on. Uh, we also did make some samples on, on site with the concrete as placed. Uh, so we made some round panels. We also made some uh, uh, flexural uh, beams so that we could bring back to the lab and, and see uh, the, exactly the same concrete that was cast, how that was performing in, in the lab. Um, so uh, moving forward, here you see the the uh, the the D day of uh, casting. So we have the concrete truck uh, shows up. Uh, the the fiber mixing was done on site, and uh, here you see the control uh, concrete along with the uh, carbon fiber uh, concrete nicely done up. Our students never never like to leave. Uh, always like to leave a mark behind. So you uh, have our UVIC uh, lab name engraved in a little inspection chamber. So this is where from the control concrete, all the lead wires are coming in into one of the inspection boxes. And from all of the co uh, carbon concrete, it's actually coming into the other ins inspection box. Um, One minute. Okay, <coughs> so I'll try and wrap. Great, thank you. So I'll try and wrap this up. So within, within five days of curing and not opening to traffic, we already saw some uh, hairline cracks in the two control pavements. Uh, the, we had no no cracks in the in the uh, carbon concrete, but we did notice a little bit of appearance of carbon fibers uh, during the finishing operation at at the top surface. Um, again, I probably don't have much time for this, but we've been doing some non-destructive evaluation of the three uh, three pavements. So this is the existing concrete. These are the two concrete pavements we did, and this is the carbon fiber concrete. So all the way from rebound hammer. Uh, testing to ultrasonic pulse velocity, which matches with the appearance of the hairline cracks, uh, to my favorite, which is the resistivity. And as you know, uh, carbon fibers can actually change uh, the uh, uh, conductivity or reduce the resistivity of concrete. And we see that here happening by an order of magnitude, uh, not, not really an order of magnitude, but uh, way lower resistivity values. Uh, finally, uh, concluding very quickly, we found that uh, the longer uh, fibers uh, for carbon uh, uh, the fibers about 18 millimeter actually did uh, work the best for us. Um, and I wanted to mention here, this is what I uh, said early on, we, are actually, we have a patented technology where we can actually coat the fibers uh, with uh, materials that have pozzolanic capacity to include the bond and uh, to include the performance of individual fibers. So we are looking into, into that as we move forward. And uh, like I said before, uh, the, uh, the carbon fiber concrete has been six months. There are no cracks. Uh, the hairline cracks that we saw in controlled concrete have actually grown over the six months. And uh, so we, we so far are pleased with what has happened. Uh, I want to acknowledge uh, the nice looking team. Uh, uh, all of them worked on this two year project. So I want to thank all of them. And uh, my final acknowledgement slide is to Alberta Innovates, our funding body. 
uh, Butler Concrete and Aggregates, uh, and all the listeners. And uh, thank you, Kai, for uh, having us in, in this uh, session.